radically new tunneling machine employing the undercutting method is put through its paces. This machine is a joint development between Wert GmbH of Germany and HDRK Mining Research Limited, an organization belonging to the three largest Canadian mining companies, Falconbridge, Inco, and Noranda. The first prototype is designed for a tunnel cross-section of 4.5 by 4.5 meters with a corner radius and a flat floor. The Canadians gave it the name Continuous Mining Machine, CMM. The original brief to the companies was to produce a machine capable of driving roadways and inclined drifts in mines with varying profiles and for ore mining. The profiles range from circular to square with rounded corners with the added option that they can be driven with either square or curved inverts or crowns. The theoretical profiles are shown in the following figures. The principle of the undercutting method is to overcome the relatively low tension strength of the rock rather than the high compressive strength, so energy consumption is lower than on the equivalent TBM. In a TBM, main force, or thrust upon the discs, and the penetration of the discs are in the direction of advance. However, when discs are employed with the undercutting method, the thrust and penetration are both perpendicular to the direction of advance. In the CMM, the discs are at an angle to the direction of the drive and as such actually pry off chips and splinters of rock. The technique results in a larger, less consistent sizing of the rock product, more akin to that from drilling and blasting. The continuous miner is fitted with four 560 millimeter diameter undercutting disc cutters mounted on rotating radially swung tool arms. These arms are swivel mounted and swung out by hydraulic cylinders. The cutter arms are mounted on a rotating cutter head assembly which is fitted to a horizontal square section inner kelly with a forward stroke of one meter. This stroke of one meter is not excavated continually like with the TBM but divided into slices with thickness of up to 200 millimeters in accordance with the pre-selected cutting depth. The cutter head is hydraulically driven and is connected to the inner kelly through a large main bearing similar to those used to mount TBM cutter heads. The central portion of the face is cut by the inner cutter arm which is arranged to swing from the outside towards the middle to allow the outer arms to have enough purchase to begin undercutting the rest of the faces. During the cutting process, all arms are working simultaneously. After some experimental work, it was realized that a central core, measuring up to 600 millimeters in diameter in sandstone, could be left to break off by itself. The undercutting discs of the three outer arms each work at the same diameter in spiral cutting tracks, but swinging outwards, starting at the cutting face created by the inner arm. When the three outer cutting discs reach the maximum inner circular profile of the tunnel cross section, they begin to form the corners as required. To achieve the desired profile, the cutting assembly is hydraulically actuated using electronic control according to a pre-selected program. The control system for positioning and loading the discs is very sophisticated and is a major feature of the design. The cutting functions are under the complete control of a group of computers. The continuous miner is self-driven on crawler tracks and is articulated at its midpoint with the Kelly assembly forward of the joint and the electrical and hydraulic power supply systems to the rear. The operator's cabin is also rearwards. The articulation improves the ability of the machine to maneuver and in the present configuration, a minimum curve radius of 25 meters is possible. The space between the front and rear modules serves as a working area for rock bolt drilling of over 120 degrees of the roof 
using vertical side-mounted drills. A telescopic protective shield guards the machine against falling rock. Directional control is by laser beam and target. Apart from the gripper pairs securing the outer kelly, the cutting assembly also possesses stabilizers to the roof, floor, and sides, mounted in the region of the gear housing, together with extra side stabilizers for use during cutting operations. Cuttings are collected by a muck apron at the front of the machine, which feeds a centrally situated chain conveyor that runs to the rear. Research and development emphasis has been on cutter head dynamics, the control system, and the hydraulic system, where a thorough modeling and simulation phase greatly enhanced the engineering of the final design. Functional shop tests on the prototype machine were completed, following which it was transferred to the Herdeca Quarry near Essen, owned by DMT, for a further four months of load testing. The Herdeca tests have produced comprehensive data for evaluation and proved the cutting principle. And results of the cutting action and chip formation look very promising. Indications are that cutter life is economical. The normally expected problems with vibration, dust, and noise have not arisen under testing, indicating that the machine should be well within the parameters required for the mines. There is a little spitting as the cutters pass across the face, but fly rock does not tend to pass beyond the rotating table. Any dust generation is picked up close to the source by the exhaust fan, in much the same manner as for a road header. The size of the cuttings, often measuring 400 by 200 by 100 millimeters in sandstone, gives some indication of the efficiency of the rock-breaking operation. The performance in cubic meters of excavated rock per cutter is for the CMM, with about 12 cubic meters per hour, about six times better than a TBM, with about two cubic meters per hour. As you can see, the size of the cuttings were too much for this normal-sized conveyor belt. Of course, a much more adequate conveyor belt is required for the CMM. Thank you very much for your time and attention. Goodbye.